Welcome to Messy Easter. At home, online. For the first time ever. Isn't it exciting? This is Professor Potty. Where? Oh, oh that's me. <laughs> Hello. And this is Barbara. Hello, everybody. Are you there? We can't see you from here. Where did Professor Potty go? Did you see where he went? He's behind me. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, no, he isn't. There you are. If you've joined us for Messy Church, you can send us a message and, and maybe a photograph. You can do that by putting a comment on the Chapel Facebook page. And then you'll be able to see who else shared with this messy church. Today, Gillian and Carol have craft activities for you. And, and, and I, I will share some fun food. And, and, then and I, Debbie will tell you about a treasure hunt you can try. And I... And come to my lab and I will show you some experiments you can do. Finally, Jane will lead us in a short celebration. But first, Gillian. Am I doing my experiments now? What does it say on the screen? Uh, Gillian's Easter eggs. So, over to Gillian. Good morning. It's Easter. And to celebrate, Christians give each other gifts. Usually chocolate eggs. But why do they do this? Well, to celebrate new life in Jesus. When the stone was rolled away from Jesus' grave, he rose from death and was given new life by his heavenly Father, God. When you eat your Easter egg this year, think the chicken represents the new life and the stone was rolled away from the tomb and that represents the egg. So let's try a craft to represent an egg. For this, you'll need a template of an egg You'll need some scissors, a pencil for your template, some paper. Now it can be coloured paper or you can do white paper. And if it's just plain white paper, what you do is decorate um, your paper with coloured pens, which I've got here. You'll also need some glue, some ribbon, some buttons if you've got them, or some beads. So what you do first is cut out your template. This one is about seven centimeters um, or three inches in the old money. And then get your piece of colored paper and draw round your template. And I'm sure you all know how you would draw round um, a template. And I'm doing it far too quickly and just, there we go. So there is your template and there is your egg. So what you would do now is just very quickly cut round, cut round the egg until you have a shape like that. Now do a few of these because you'll need a few stuck together. So getting your pieces that you've cut out, glue them together so you need some glue, just rub it along the back of the pen like that and then stick on another piece of cut out egg. Join them together and in Blue Peter style. I've got another one um, that I started earlier on. When you've done this, if you've got a little bit of colour overlapping that you don't want you can just trim those off so they're not seen and nobody knows then that you've made a little bit of a a mistake then with that egg fold it in half and you're going to stick them back to back on your other egg remembering that your egg has got a pointy side and a slightly rounded side, a slightly rounder side because it's an oval. 
So you stick your new piece onto your egg like that and wait for it to dry. And because I'm doing it Blue Peter style, I've done one earlier, made one earlier. When this is dry, you then put a line, run a line right up the egg and glue on your ribbon. And you can put some beads or some bells or some buttons on the bottom and thread a piece through to the top. And then if you want to, you can put on some sparkly um, shapes. Just pop them off and stick them on and you'll find that you can have a little bit of a sparkle um, going on there. And that will be your Easter egg. You can then fasten it onto a tree or a twig or something that you found in the garden. And that is our Christmas, our Christmas, that is our Easter tree. So God bless this Easter time. Much love from Finlay and Gillian. I, I want to try making those eggs, but this video is still running. All you have to do is press pause and the video will wait until you're ready. Pause. Yes. Hi everyone. Welcome to Carol's Easter craft activity. But firstly, I'd like to wish you all a really happy Easter. I hope that you've all had lots of chocolate Easter eggs and are ready to make your very own Easter bunny. Easter is a symbol of hope and renewal and new life. I'm sure you can all think of lots of things at this time of year which symbolise and remind us of new life. We think of the grass growing, the leaves on the trees, the spring flowers growing and of course the rabbits running about in the fields. Now we have our very own rabbit here and he's called Thumper. We have our own Easter bunny. This is Thumper, floppy ears. He likes to run on the grass. Okay. So I hope you're all ready and have remembered what Professor Potty and Barbara told you you would need to make your own Easter bunny. So just to remind you so that you've got everything together, we need a toilet roll inner. Thank you. Toilet roll inner. Um, we need two different colours of paper. Thank you. Drop that one. Now we need a pen. Thank you. And some straw for the whiskers. Thank you very much. And we need some googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, don't worry. Thank you. And some googly eyes and some glue. It doesn't matter what kind of glue. We've got some Pritt stick. There we go. Thank you. And some scissors. Please don't throw them, Rosie. Thank you. And just one last thing. You need some cotton wool or pom-poms for a rabbit's tail. Oh, Rosie. Just one would be enough. Sorry. Thank you. This will be a lovely rabbit's tail. So the first thing we're going to do is cover the toilet roll inner with some paper. This one's got pink on it. And we're going to put some blue onto this one. So we've got some paper, which is just a little bit wider than the toilet roll inner. And first of all, we're going to glue all over the outside of the toilet roll inner around the edges as well and then we're going to start to roll the paper around the toilet roll inner okay like so okay now you can either cut snip that off or you can just glue this bit Wrap it round. So really, 
we've just wrapped up the toilet roll inner, okay, and some blue paper. Okay. Now we need to make our rabbit some ears, a face, some feet, and a nose. So you can either do templates out of cardboard and, and draw around them um, on a piece of paper and draw around those um, and then cut them out or you can just um, draw them straight onto your paper or card and cut them out. Okay, so we'll cut those out now. We're going to do the ears first. I've already started this one and we'll cut those ears out. You can be floppy or patterned. We've got some glitter ears for this rabbit. Okay. And this rabbit's actually going to have a matching glittery nose. So there we go, we've got two ears. And we'll do a little button nose, a little circle. You could use a, a button if you want to from your from your sewing bat box. Um and stick that on. Okay, there we go, there's our little button nose. Okay. And I've already drawn round um, some some templates for the face. So we'll just cut that out. Try not to show any pencil markings. Uh, take your time, make it nice and neat. There we go. That's going to be our rabbit's face. And this is going to be our rabbit's feet. We now have our rabbit's face, our rabbit's ears, a button nose and some feet and you can see on the one we've made already we've got some contrasting ears and a matching nose and we've got a face and some feet that match the, the background but you can do anything you want. Make it a jazzy rabbit. So now we're going to decorate our rabbit's face. So I want to get some googly eyes and some glue. Just take a little bit of glue there and pop it on the back of the googly eyes. And then oh, take the googly eyes on. If you haven't got googly eyes, don't worry. Just draw some nice bright eyes on for your rabbit. Okay, there we go, there's your rabbit's googly eyes and then we're going to use some straw for its whiskers, again I'm just going to put some glue on where the whiskers are going to sit. whiskers on. If you haven't got straw, we pinched this out of Thumper's cage, then just cut up some cardboard, very, very fine card. Okay. And I'm going to use some glue again to stick the nose on top. Keep the straw in place. There we go. And then just one final addition to our rabbit's face. A little cheeky nose there we go and now we're going to do some feet for our rabbit so we'll just put some little marks with a pen on the paper 
which indicate its claws. Okay. There we go. That's our rabbit's feet. Ready? Okay, so now I want you to get your um, toilet roll in there that's covered in paper back. It should be nice and dry now. And what I'd like you to do is take the scissors and just snip down till you reach the cardboard of the toilet roll in there. Can you see that? Okay, I'm going to take each piece and pop it down inside so you get a nice smooth edge. Okay, like that. And then the same with the other end. Okay. So you need to glue the back of your, the ears halfway up. you've got plenty of glue on. Okay. If you've got thicker card, you might just need to put a little bit of extra glue on there. Okay. And now we're going to use this to put on as the rabbit's feet. So you need to put some glue across the back of that. Doesn't need to be all the way across. There we go. And then finally, you're going to put the rabbit's face on. Okay, so you need to be a little bit careful here. You just don't want to knock the whiskers off or anything. So just, just pop carefully some glue on. Position it carefully, and there we have the rabbit's face on. So now, just a finishing touch to our rabbit, we want to give him a nice little bob tail. So uh, I'd recommend that you get a little bit of glue on your spreader and just pop it onto the pom pom so it can stick on properly and then we we'll just stick the pom-pom on at the back that's the rabbit's tail you might just have to hold it for a few seconds to keep it stuck in place okay so now we have our rabbits Okay, I hope you've enjoyed making an Easter bunny and I really do wish you all a very happy Easter and hope you enjoy the rest of your Easter time with your family. Well done everyone, happy Easter! Thank you Carol, Rosie and Thumper. They're really cute aren't they those rabbits? Oh look! It's Barbara's fun food activity next. I wish I could do that one. It's got mini eggs. Now for our fun food activity, we're going to make these. 
These represent tomb to the tomb, the empty tomb with the stone rolled away. Because on Easter day, Jesus rode from the dead and we're all celebrating. This is what we're going to make next. Professor Potter, do you want to have a go? Oh, yes, please. I'd love to. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need some green icing sugar. Oh, how do you make that? You need sieved icing sugar and then you need some blue and some green food colouring and just put enough in, only little drops, till it gets to something that looks like the colour of grass. You're going to need a digestive biscuit. Yeah, I've got one of those. A jammy dodger. Got my jammy something dodger. something like it. Yeah. A mini egg. Oh, yes. Uh, no, not yet. You need some sort of sprinkles. I've got some flowers. And I've got some sprinkles. And you're going to need a sharp knife. Now be careful using sharp knives. Or a spoon and a knife for spreading the icing. So first of all, we're going to take the knife, the sharp knife, be careful, and cut a little corner off the jammy dodger. Then it stands up flat. Can you do that, oh, Professor right. Potter? Cut a small corner off the jammy dodger. There we are. Are we allowed to eat those bits? If you want. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love the jammy too. dodger. I haven't said that a bit about the stone rolling away. Now we're going to take our digestive biscuit and we're going to spread some icing on it. You do it with a spoon. Yes, I'll use the spoon. I didn't do that, it's about the stone rolling away. There we are. Does that look like grass? And then we can put Need some more. That's okay, yeah. Oh, I think we're getting there now. Yeah, go on. Then we're going to put the jammy dodger on the back, so that represents the tomb. The open tomb. I never did the bit at the beginning. Right, here we are. We can do that. And page. we can put the mini egg, which is the stone rolled away from the tomb. The stone rolled away. There. Ooh, that looks nice. And then we must put some flowers in the grass outside the grave. I've got little mini flowers. I think Professor Potty's got some sprinkles. I've got some sprinkles. There we are. A tomb biscuit. Well done, Professor and Potter. That's my tomb biscuit. Yay! Oh, that was fun. Thanks, Barbara. You're welcome. Can I eat it now? No, we have Debbie's treasure hunt next. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the treasure hunt part of Messy Church today. First of all, God bless you all. I hope you're keeping safe and well. Now then, a treasure hunt. Well, what you can do to make it even more fun is you can challenge your parents and see who's going to find the items first. Or maybe your family are using Zoom at the moment and maybe you're all getting together online with your family and you could challenge the other members of your family online on Zoom. However you choose to use that treasure hunt, I hope you have lots of fun, but be safe. Don't go rushing around too fast. Okay, now I'm going to give you some items that I want you to go and find. Now you can pause the video each time I give you an item and then set the video going again when you're ready. Okay, here we go. Here's our first item I'd like you to go and find. Who's going to find it first? Number one, a toothbrush. Off you go. Next item. Can you find a left shoe? Go, 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 go. Who got that first this time? Okay, here we go. Number three. I'd like you to find for me 
either a hair bobble or elastic band, whichever you've got. Go! Well, did you beat your mum that time? Number four. Can you find me a teaspoon? Who was first? Number five. This time, you might need to go outside. Can you find me a peg? Number six, are you ready? Now be careful with this one, don't break it. Can you find me an egg? Number seven, that's my dog just coming to say hello, say hello Hugo, oh, that's, that's Hugo, yes. <laughs> okay, Hugo wants to play. Number seven, can you find me, I bet you can, because it's Easter. Can you find me some chocolate? Have you eaten all of it already? Bet you wish you'd save some now. Okay, number eight. Can you find me, shh, be quiet Hugo, please. Sorry about that. Number eight. Can you find me a tea bag? I wonder who knew where they were. Number nine, can you find me, and be careful if you have to run upstairs for this, can you find me a teddy bear? Whose teddy bear did you find? And number 10, our last item today. <laughs> Hugo's definitely wanting to play. Can you find me a pen or pencil? Well, count up who got the first time most. That person's the winner. Maybe they could eat the chocolate. Or maybe they'd prefer to eat an egg. Anyway, I hope you've had fun. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. Stay home. God bless. Thank you, Debbie and Hugo. Professor Potty, what are you eating? Um, I'm eating on a red button. Well, thing. hurry up. You're on now. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to do some experiments to investigate what's called surface tension. And this is all about surfaces of liquids in which there are forces and we're going to see how we can mess about with those forces and show that they are there. So, I said that we would need a plate with a lip. Okay? And that is so that the full cream milk will stay in the bottom of the plate. So just pour enough milk in to cover the bottom of the plate. You don't need a lot. do not need to be deep. Now, Next thing is to add some of the food colouring. And we do this by carefully pouring the odd drop onto the plate. Blonk. Now you can see that's just uh, having a little spread for the minute. Just a small amount. And then we need to get some washing up liquid onto the cotton bud. Now you can either do that by pouring a drop of washing up liquid directly onto the cotton wool bud or, like I have, you can put some in a small pot and you can dip it in. Wipe the excess off and now we've got cotton bud which has got washing up liquid on it. I notice the green colour is looking a bit yellow has now spread right across the plate, or most of the way across the plate, but that's fine. Now here's the cotton wool bud, soaked in washing up liquid. Now we just dab briefly 
one point the cotton wool bud into the colour. Oh, did you see that? It's a great big white spot. Oh, there's another. Ah, and another. And that's the surface tension pulling the colour back. Now we're going to add some more colours of food colouring. So I'll put some a bit heavy on that one, never mind. Now we'll freshen up the uh, washing up liquid on the cotton bud. And now this time when we put the cotton wool bud in, we're going to hold it and see what happens. So put it in the red, for example, and see what happens. That's a little disappointing in that one. Let's see what it does in the blue. Now notice I've got some of the red with me, which will mess things up with the blue. Oh, that's a bit more lively. You can see it continues to stream the colour coming from the cotton wool bud. And we try it in the yellow. You see some yellow coming in there. And that one is nice. Blue and green, uh, blue and yellow mixed together to make it green. Now we've got some flow going on, haven't we? So you can do this now to your heart's content. Just keep blobbing the brush, the um, washing up liquid, wherever you want to see something happening, and have fun. So that's our first experiment on surface tension. Now we're going to look at why we use washing up liquid when it comes to getting greasy plates nice and clean. Now, this plate has got a nice plain bottom so that we can see what's going on. So I'm going to grease this plate with some butter. Just spread it with a knife, roughly get some all over the place and then you might get a little bit of assistance from a piece of kitchen roll to spread it over the entire surface of the plate. Right, so there's my greasy plate. Now here I've got some water in which I've put some colouring, food colouring, so that you can see the colour, the, the water. Now put some water on this plate, the clean plate. Doesn't need to be a great deal. And now we share it around the plate and you can see that it spreads nice and evenly over the plate. The whole plate is now wet. Now I'm going to do the same on this plate and see what happens with this one. Put some water on and share it around the plate and now you can see that it's not spread evenly across the plate because the water, because of its surface tension, pulls itself in. If you look closely, you can see they're quite lumpy. Some of those globs of water on there. Now, what we've said is, why do we use washing up liquid? Okay, so these globs of water are trying to pull the water into itself and not spread out like they did in this plate. So we're going to add washing up liquid now. So we'll get rid of this water out of the way. Now 
and we can spread washing up liquid on the surface of the thing. Now here's my washing up liquid from before. It's easy with my finger. So spread washing up liquid onto the plate. Get it nice and evenly all over. And then, luckily I've got the kitchen roll here, I can get my finger clean again. So now we're going to add some more water to this plate to see whether this washing up liquid has made any difference. So there's the water on the greasy plate. And we shake it around. And notice it's now spreading a lot more evenly. You can still see the butter under there, but the water is now wetting the surface of the butter where it was trying to keep to itself. Now it's quite happily spreading out. And as it spreads out, it's got a chance of getting in underneath the butter and loosening it up from the plate. So the washing up liquid has broken down that surface tension that made the water try and keep to itself and has allowed it to spread out to get working on it. Of course you use hot water normally and that would help melt the butter or the fat, whatever it is, as well. So that's surface tension and soap. And now it's time for our celebration of Easter. Yay! Over to you, Jane. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whenever you're watching this, we hope you are enjoying this special Easter messy church. Maybe you could send us some pictures of what you've made. Last time at messy church, we were thinking about journeys. And this time, we're also thinking about a journey. The journey of Jesus in the last week of his life. A week in which some amazing and strange things happened. And we're going to take a closer look at what happened. It was definitely not an easy journey. Jesus knew he was heading into trouble by going to Jerusalem at the time of the festival. No, not a pot festival. A special celebration for the Jews called Passover. This meant there would be lots of people in the city. But also, Jesus knew that the people in charge in Jerusalem didn't like him and they wanted to get rid of him. But still he went. When he came into the city, everyone started cheering him and waving palm branches like he was a great hero. He was riding, not in a big chariot, or on a massive horse, but on a donkey. Then he went into their temple and he had a bit of a tantrum. He tipped over all the tables of people selling things because they were not being honest and making a lot of money out of the poorest people. A few days later, he had a special meal with his closest friends. They shared bread and wine together. We remember this when we have bread and wine in a communion service. Then he did something really odd. He washed their feet. Now this was something that normally only the lowest servants did because it was a horrible job. People walked around in bare feet then. Their feet would have been disgusting. Jesus was their teacher and their leader. But Jesus knelt down and washed their feet. I bet you're glad we don't have to do that every Sunday. It would be a bit like inviting the Queen to dinner and then after dinner, the queen rolls up her sleeves and starts washing all the greasy pots. Jesus was teaching them and us that we must look after and serve each other, no matter how important we think we are. After that special meal, they all went outside and suddenly some soldiers came and they arrested Jesus and took him as a prisoner. How did they know he was there? Jesus had been let down by one of his closest friends who told the soldiers where to find him. All the rest of his friends either ran away 
and left him, or said they didn't know him, some friends. Then Jesus was tortured and hung on a cross until he died. And he willingly walked into all of this. He knew he was in danger. He didn't run from it. Why? Because Jesus loves us all so much. He wanted to show us how much he loves every single one of us. But that's not all. Jesus knew that us humans have a problem that needed fixing. I'm going to do a little experiment now. Move over, Professor Potty. You can do this at home later, as long as you have an adult with you. This is what you'll need. You will need a candle that stands up on its own, some red food colouring, a small amount of water, a big glass, a white plate, a penny, and some matches. Be very careful with these matches, make sure there's an adult with you. Now, I want you to put your hand up if you have never done anything wrong, ever. Never annoyed your parents or children, got them cross, annoyed a friend, wished you had not said something or done something. When that happens, when you have hurt or annoyed someone, what happens to that friendship? Is it as good as it was before? Or is there some kind of barrier there? Your friend might say it's okay, but how do you really know? When we do things that hurt or upset one another, it upsets God too. And that makes a barrier between us and God. The Bible calls this barrier sin. So how can we get right with God? Maybe we ought to be punished or told off and that would sort it. The answer is, we can't do it. God knew we couldn't make it right ourselves. So he sent Jesus. That's why Jesus came and died for us. When he died on the cross, he took away and paid the price for all the things we have ever done or will do that are against God. Jesus has taken our sin so we can be close again with God and know how much he loves us. All we have to do is take that love for ourselves. So now it's time for our experiment. The penny is on the plate and this represents you and I. I'm going to pour a little bit of water onto the plate so it covers the penny. And then a tiny drop of red food colouring. This represents all the sin that covers all of us. Then the candle is Jesus the light of the world. I'm going to light the candle. <laughs> then we're going to put the glass over the candle you could say this is like the tomb that Jesus was in. Then all the sin, it's all gone away from the penny towards the candle. To demonstrate that Jesus took all our sin away when he died on the cross. But don't forget the best part. He didn't stay dead. He came through death to life again. His grave was empty. And he came back to show his disciples that he had even come through death. So that we too can know the love of God forever. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. And now it's time to sing. So I want you to pause the video and then go into the kitchen, get some pots and pans or anything else you can make a noise with and let's have a big Easter celebration. We'll still be here when you get back. The words will be on the screen 
and we're going to play it through once so you can get the tune. Let's go! to make. Remember to look out for next month we're going to do another online messy church. That's if we still have to be in this situation. And we're going to finish with a prayer and let's remember all those who were affected by the situation we're in. We're going to say the messy church grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>